Easter eggs in Notion are exciting, doubly so when I get to share. Are you all ears? Every software has pleasant surprises, unexpected and fun outcomes, tips, hacks, tricks or secrets that are not known to many. Of all the videos I've made so far, this one has been the most fun to make. Many times a day, I come up with thoughts that I quickly want to capture before it evaporates. Does that sound familiar to you? The nearest device that I have next to me is my phone. The most trusted software that aggregates all of my life nowadays is Notion. So I went around looking for solutions. I found a solution on the web. Open a Telegram messenger and send information through a bot to your Notion homepage. Notion had not opened its pages to APIs and as I was exploring this, I found a simpler but more powerful foolproof solution. To start off, you want to create a separate page called Inbox that you can link back to your homepage. Inside the Inbox, I created a simple list database table that contains some of my most important capture types and that includes calendars, tasks, video ideas, book recommendations, shopping lists, reflections, and random notes. Now I went to the top of the inbox page and copied the link. I went to an app called Shortcuts on my iPhone and created a shortcut. This shortcut would take me straight to the Notion inbox. Now I had to export this shortcut to my iPhone screen so that I had an icon to click when I needed to. Now I can do the same thing for any other page that I wanted to have a shortcut for on my iPhone screen. So there you have it, a completely customizable, quick data capture solution that does not depend on any other third party solution. Whether we work alone or in teams, we are looking for easy access of our files from any device or location. That's where services like Dropbox or Google Drive come in. What if we could get a more affordable service, which turns out to be extremely powerful? Let's take an example that I use pretty much every day. I use presentations every day for work, but I also end up searching for the right slide because it's far higher effort just creating something from scratch. Dropbox just stores stuff in a file folder structure and just has file names to support. I've started creating a Dropbox within Notion by creating a table, type, title, tag, which gives the topics that I can search on, a rating, a creative date, an attachment, the background. Sometimes I like creating a dark background presentation and sometimes a light one, and a short list checkbox. I also add the month and the year in another column. Now to add a new file, I just add a new row and I click on the file column to upload the file from the location. Now if I need to access the file, all I need to do is to download the same. I can click and also view it in just one click. Now with the tags, I can easily search for it. Not only with tags, but in terms of title, presentation quality, so that I can have the desired template when I need them. With Notion team access, any of your team members can access the same page. Let's try and search for team and you will notice that as soon as I filter, I get these presentations and I can see their tags and their rankings. I can shortlist the same by clicking on the checkbox for access and download them when I'm ready to work on the presentation. Neat, isn't it? If you really want to solve a problem and be on top of it without making any mistakes, then there is really no better way than checklists. I won't get deep into the subject today, but I strongly recommend a read of the Checklist Manifesto written by Atul Gawande. Fortunately, Notion is extremely powerful when it comes to checklists, and you can nest them in different layers, combine them with dropdowns, or include them in databases. So when I started making my to-do database, the first thing that I had to find out is how to convert a checkbox into a number so that I can start using it with my formulae. You can see this in action for my YouTube checklist. While it's extremely simple, it's also extremely useful and you will see the value of this in the next example. 
let's create some databases. Probably one of the most powerful features in Notion is the roll-up feature. Don't mistake roll-up for summaries. You can also roll down information that's pertinent. Let's take the example of YouTube and I will show you a simple creator's database and you will see how powerful it is. Every creator has projects and in my case, it's individual YouTube videos. Let's take new Notion secrets as the project. It has sub-projects and in turn has tasks. So we have three databases. Under tasks, I have listed a set of 20 tasks to simply illustrate the point. My task manager has corresponding sub-projects listed. You can see the sub-projects in the sub-projects database as well. The due date will come from the sub-projects because then I have to data enter much less. You will shortly see how I roll this down. We have linked the three databases, tasks to sub-projects and sub-projects to projects. We have our checklist that we have included and then a goal as a formula. The reason I prefer the goal as a formula is that just by mentioning the formula as one, you can avoid repetitive typing as you keep adding tasks to the task list. This is required when we want to measure progress at the sub-project level. Now let's roll down the sub-project due dates into tasks. So this is an example of where you can work less and get more benefit. As you can see, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? I'm simply taking advantage of the relationships that I've already created. Now let's try and paste them into the progress bar formula that we created earlier. I have showcased this formula many times in my earlier videos. As you can see, you just can't do a formula on rollups. But let's change that, shall we? First we change the completed and the goal into numbers. Then we paste the formula and then we change it back into rollups. As you can see, the formula sticks even after we change it back. Now let's do the rollups from the task manager and test it to see that it's working. Now that we have set up the task manager and the sub-projects, let's focus on the projects database. Let's try and do a rollup from the sub-projects for the completed and goal and see what happens. As you can see, you can't seem to find the rollups column completed and goal. Now let's do a workaround. Let's introduce two new columns, C for completed and G for goal, and provide a reference formula to include the same values of the rollup columns. You can hide the C and G columns later so that they don't necessarily show up in the final database. Now because you are smart enough to create the dates at the sub-projects level, you can easily roll that up at the project level. And with a small trick, you can get that to show up correctly. Let's look at that as well. After you roll up the start date and the due date, you find that the fields are not exactly friendly. There are a number of dates and that can become extremely confusing. Now what we really want is one start date and one due date. If you notice closer, the first date of the start date is the date we want and the last date of the due date is the one we want. The date character length is 12. What I'm about to tell you works really well when you don't need to keep tinkering a sub-projects database. We just change the start date to S date and the due date to D date for the rollups so that we don't confuse them. The next two fields we introduce as formula, the start date and the due date. Then we use the slice formula. This is actually pretty easy. Slice is used to extract the exact number of characters from a text string. So the formula is slice followed by the property I want to work upon, the start character and the ending character. It's straightforward for the start date since it's right at the beginning. It starts with zero and takes 12 characters. For the due date, you count for the number of characters till the point where you want the extract to start and you add 12 more characters for the capture to end. Did you know that by duplicating a page and changing the settings to a light one, you can have both modes working light as well as dark? I use Notion for long form writing and I frequently require to change the text color or the background. Instead of using the pop-up menu, 
What I do is use a shortcut key, Command Shift H. While it may not be anything new, but I'm in love with this as it quickly enables me to highlight anything with the last saved highlight option. So how many did you know already? Do you know of any other Easter egg functionality that I missed out today? Do comment below. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell to stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Peace.